Say hi. Um, my name is Ben McKeegan, and uh, this is my art show. Uh, do a lot of different research in different religions and spiritualities and um, philosophies and try to find a consistent vein of all of them. Um, the general tone that I find in all that is kind of where I found the energy that I put into all these different pieces. Uh, it's, an, it's an intuitive research process, and kind of just following whatever feels right at the time. And that's where I've developed the work process that I have as well, where I don't really have a plan of getting any of these pieces. It's more. Um, responding to the material and creating as I go along and um, seeing what happens and kind of just letting the natural flow of the creation dictate how the piece ends up. Um, for example, the burning process of a lot of these finishes was um, by happenstance and then pushing and pulling that material surface back and forth. Um, and even with the more um, representative images like the carved faces they're just going along with the wood and seeing where the grain leads me to create what kind of facial structure that I end up creating. Like when I grew up, I grew up in a, a relatively affluent area, um, part-time, like my dad's house was in this nicer spot, my mom's house was in you know, a more real area where you, you know, you got the nice sweet old lady on one side of your house, you got a crack house down the street, you know, it's like real life, you know, shit happens. Um, but so being in that in-between space, you know, I did, you know, the trades were kind of frowned upon for, you know, whatever reason. It, was just, it wasn't, it wasn't what you did. And so when I went into art school, you know, I'd never seen a welder before, I'd never you know, done any of that stuff. And then I go into this, is metal. You're, you're playing with metal. I used to, I used to say, it's a little bit vulgar, but you're fucking with the uncomfortable. You know, it's like the world is made out of this stuff. Like this is the stuff that we trust. And it's like I can bend to that now and cut that now. And it's like uh, what? <laughs> That's not how that works. Like you're not supposed to be able to to play with that. You know. And then once you do that, it just changes everything. You know, possibilities just become overwhelming. Because you're like, I can do all the dumb shit. I can make all the beautiful things weird. You know, and so it's just, it's capturing all this just like volcanic kind of energy. And then having it in a manageable small teeny size, it's, it's super bizarre. And you know, and then same with the fabrication, where it's like it's the stuff where it's designed for bridge building, you know, and we're just tinkering, we're making little weird little figurative pieces. It's fucking weird. It's a bizarre, bizarre interaction with the material because it's so it's so aggressive, you know. Like it's just every moment you're getting hurt, you know, just everything you do is just like volatile and violent but then you're trying to pull this like soft elegance out of it you know or or you know engaging the aggression and rolling with it and letting those hard lines and hard edges exist it's fun man you know and that's kind of that that exploration is what led me into pieces like this um, where, you know, I was making these pieces with my own fabricated parts and they were, they're good. I liked them and, you know, but my, my craft wasn't to the level of my expectation, right? Like I wanted beautiful things, but I couldn't make them yet. Um, so then I started playing the found object where I would dig in these trash piles for, um, you know, old castings and old pieces that um, were abandoned. It's like, okay, so this was an industrial thing. Like this is made out of parts from, you know, pipe fitting and then uh, like an antique bear press of sorts. And then I disassembled it and 
and played with it. And I was like, those are just stupid elegant lines. You know, it's like, even if I had drawn it, I wouldn't have been able to cut those kinds of clean lines like that. You know, and so I was really starting to dive into it. Like, oh, wow, these are beautiful things that exist in this world that I can manipulate. And, you know, if I can change them and create a form that is akin to my work, and, you know, come from me with these lines, it's like, now I'm getting the best of both worlds. I got involved in the casting process and actually in ceramics as well, and that kind of dictated a lot of um, the exploration and process that I had with a lot of these. So actually some of these pieces are the creating elements for other pieces. For example, the posts that are standing in the middle of the room are actually the molds um, that the pieces on the wall were cast into. And, um, so I really got involved in the carving process while thinking about this inverted positive negative. Um, and at the end of the day, I fell in love with the mold so much that I was able to tweak them a little bit and push them into finished product as well. Um, and that dictates a little smaller works that I've done since I graduated. It's um, still heavily involved in the wood material, um, but concrete just being such a pliable and accessible material. And, um, it's really, it's good to work with as far as creating multiples and great variants. So uh, these pieces were designed originally to be interchangeable. You know, so I still had the freedom of each individual side and each element of the piece. I wasn't dictated by an end product. It was just creating possibilities. So again, leading to that kind of intuitive process, even in the uh, casting process, which is generally more um, methodical and at least planned out. So allowing for that freedom and that natural flow and that exploration instead of really ironing down what's going to happen, what's going to come out and letting it play, letting what happens happen. Uh, he is He's part of a series, um, and he's actually, he's had quite the life. Um, so originally, I created these two other figures. Well, first I created a full-scale version of what ended up being Cats, where it was uh, a figure that if it were to stand upright, it would have been 12, 13 feet tall. But it was crouching with a receiving gesture, um, and it's still stood taller than me and built it out as a big square tube. Um, similar visual as him. Um, and he's this moving being because um, that was that was what I needed at that time. Um, and then I started I scaled it down to a smaller stock and started playing with the form and playing with gesture and um, he was born on a uh, New Year's Eve. I decided that I was going to spend New Year's Eve in the shop by myself. I was going to rain in the year working and um, made him in his simplest form just the torso and head. Um, he didn't have the chest plate yet. Um, and then as I moved forward with that object, um, there was another piece that was in parts and been laying around the shop and scattered. And I ended up assembling them into this tall um, pendulum piece that hung from the ceiling. I had a cable that ran all the way up into the recessed darkness. And it hung like an inch off the ground. And he was the he was the chest piece of that. So it was this spiraling um, Plum bobs of the sorts, uh, very angular, very, um, a lot of downward movement. And then he was the return and rising movement. And then his um, swoopies <laughs> actually spiraled up and around the piece. So it was this swirling kind of motion. Um, but he wasn't as clean as the rest of the piece. So I ended up taking him off and placing him in the casting. 
that actually mold it on him and took the casting off. Uh, so it was a more elegant, a cleaner version. And I refined that piece and then he lived as, you know, just uh, discarded for a little bit. And then I, I returned to him and made that kind of happen and turned into this kind of bizarre pseudo crucifix. Um, and then he lived on the front of the house that I was in particular in the time until he was here. And that's probably what he's thinking about too. But it's uh, but his original, all of his iterations have been protected in one regard or another. Um, so he's he's always been this kind of uh, protective totem of sorts, of, like old man before there. Um, he is one of my favorites. I I guess if I were to create the body of death, that's what I would want. This kind of this this. Uh, you know, chimera of sorts, where it's just, you know, very involved in nature, but then also, you know, familiar. Then, if you look at him in certain lights, he has a very sinister look, and it's really funny because in the original, I always had this very soft emotion that you know, I was creating because like, this is a kind uh, element. And some of my friends would look at him just like, he's terrified. I can't engage this thing. I was like, oh, okay, get up, really get up into it, you know, because there's a space where his antlers um, encircle you, and everybody kind of did naturally. Um, whenever I've shown them, they get right up into it, and they're in this closed space. Um, when you get under them, it's actually got this very slight hint to the smile. And it's, it's actually, I find it endearing. Um, yeah, he's, he's another protective. A lot of these are protective because that was what I was feeling when I was making them. Was this need to protect and then this inability to do so. Um, so all these things became stuff like that. A lot of a lot of the other pieces did. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's about the interior process and your journey. Um, it's about exploring and it's about finding when things are talking to you and listening and letting the material really tell you where you're going um, and not not forcing it and um, one of my mentors said uh, if you're honest and this is a long lines of if you are completely honest with what you're feeling while you make something the people who view it will understand. But if you try and hide anything, you're gonna lose people. And so it's, um, even when I didn't know what I was feeling, I just let it be raw. And so it's, it's about that, it's about capturing that energy and not letting myself get in the way of it. I know everybody's got their life that they bring to a piece, but um, I just try to put it into the piece honestly enough that if there's any part of that that anybody can understand, then you know they'll feel it. They don't have to know the narrative; they just have to know the 